This is Land of Havila with the book of Acts, the fifth book of the New Testament of the Bible. It's an account of the days and years just after Jesus departed. It's also called Acts of the Apostles or Acts of the Holy Spirit because it describes what the Holy Spirit did through the apostles during that time. The book of Acts is a follow-up to the Gospel of Luke, so to our listeners who aren't familiar with that, please do Luke first. You can scroll down our podcast page for the Gospel of Luke or find it at our website, landofhavila.net. Here in Acts, we'll read the entire book and explain as we go, as we've done in other books. We read from the World English Bible because it's faithful to the original Greek and it's not copyrighted, so we avoid legal issues. Our name, Land of Havila, comes from Genesis chapter 2. It's a place with all the good stuff. Reading now from Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The first book I wrote, Theophilus, concerned all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was received up after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also showed himself alive after he suffered by many proofs, appearing to them over a period of forty days and speaking about God's kingdom. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Don't depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which you heard from me. For John indeed baptized in water, but you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Comment in verse 1, the author didn't identify himself, but he said he wrote a first book, implying that this book is a follow-up. He says the first book was, quote, all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, end quote. When he says began, he's implying that Jesus didn't stop doing and teaching when he departed. Jesus still did things and taught things after he departed by means of the Holy Spirit. To this day, he continues to do and to teach. He only began when he was on the earth. In verse 1, this current book is addressed to Theophilus. Theophilus is Greek for lover of God. Theophilus might have been an actual person, or more likely he's anyone and everyone who loves God. There's no clear statement of it, but the first book in question must be the Gospel of Luke because that's the only other book addressed to Theophilus, and the Gospel of Luke is indeed what Jesus began to do and to teach. So these two facts pretty much nail it that this is a sequel to the Gospel of Luke, and they do have the same author. Neither book gives the author's name, but it's traditionally recognized as Luke, the physician and companion of the Apostle Paul, Colossians 4.14. 2 Timothy 4.11 and Philemon 1.24. In verses 2 to 4, before Jesus departed, he instructed the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they would be baptized by the Holy Spirit, quote, not many days from now, end quote. They didn't know what baptism in the Holy Spirit was, but they're about to find out. In verse 3, Jesus showed himself alive after he suffered by many proofs, appearing to the disciples over a period of 40 days and speaking to them. He had flesh and bones, Luke 24, 39, ate with them, Luke 24, 43, and appeared to be completely recovered from his experience, except that he still bore the nail holes in his hands and spear hole in his side, John 20, 27. The nail holes should remind us that since Jesus didn't spare himself, but freely gave himself, he'll also freely give us all things, Romans 8, 32. How will Jesus withhold anything from us with holes in his hands? In verse 5, the baptism of the Holy Spirit will be an immersion experience, judging from the way Jesus compared it to water baptism. Quote, For John indeed baptized in water, but you'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. End quote. The disciples had already received the Holy Spirit on the day Jesus rose from the grave. Jesus came to them in a shut-up room and, quote, He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. John 20, 22. At the same time, on the same day that Jesus rose, quote, he opened their minds that they might understand the scriptures, Luke 24, 45. So the disciples had already received the Holy Spirit on day one, and as proof of it, they understood the scriptures, but they had not been baptized or immersed in the Spirit, or, quote, clothed with power from on high, as Jesus described it in Luke 24, 49. In verse 2, Luke says that his last book brought us up to the time that Jesus was, quote, received up, end quote. That also checks out to be the Gospel of Luke because the last four verses of Luke do describe Jesus' ascension. Luke said the ascension occurred at or near Bethany, which was a little village on the Mount of Olives, a short walk from Jerusalem. 
Coming up, Luke will give more detail about the ascension. We don't suppose that Luke was there, but he said in his last book that he did his research, quote, having traced all things accurately from the first, Luke 1, 3, and he used the accounts of eyewitnesses, Luke 1, 2. Now going on before Jesus ascended, verse 6, Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, are you now restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It isn't for you to know times or seasons which the Father has set within his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. When he had said these things, as they were looking, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. While they were looking steadfastly into the sky as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white clothing, who also said, You men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, who was received up from you into the sky, will come back in the same way as you saw him going into the sky. Comment verse 6, The disciples asked the Lord, Are you now restoring the kingdom to Israel? In other words, now that you're risen, isn't it time to take the throne and become king? Do away with the current government and replace it with yours. Make Israel the head of all the nations of the earth as prophesied. Give us the kingdom of God on earth as you taught us to pray. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God on earth is probably the subject of more Old Testament prophecy than any other event, so it's no surprise that they expected it. Jesus didn't say he wasn't going to bring it because he will, but not yet. In verse 7, it's not for us, quote, to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority, end quote. So it'll happen, but we don't know when. We're still looking forward to the time when the seventh angel sounds his trumpet and says, quote, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever, Revelation 11:15. Amen. In verse 8, Jesus said, Before I restore the kingdom, there's some other business. First, wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. Then you'll be my witnesses to the uttermost parts of the earth. After he said this about being his witnesses, quote, As they were looking, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. In verse 9, he could have chosen anything for his last statement in the flesh, but he chose to make it about being his witnesses. In verses 9 and 10, naturally the apostles watched as Jesus ascended as long as they could see him, and even after he disappeared into a cloud, they kept watching, maybe to see him one last time, maybe through a break in the clouds, looking, looking, but nothing. It's still the same today. We want to see Jesus, and we will. In the meantime, we have some good news. The prophet Daniel saw him on the other side of the cloud. He saw it in a vision from the perspective of heaven. He watched while Jesus broke through the top side of the cloud and saw him being received into heaven. Quote, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Daniel seven thirteen and 14. So Jesus lives and is in control of his kingdom. It hasn't come yet with observation, because for the time being it's within us. Quote, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. While the apostles were straining their eyes for one last look in verses 10 and 11, two men stood by them in white clothing and made them feel silly. Quote, Why do you stand looking into the sky? End quote. So you and I shouldn't stand looking into the sky for Jesus to return, but work while it's still day, for the night's coming when no one can work, John 9, 4. And in verse 11, Jesus will, re will return the same way he left, by the clouds of the sky. Quote, all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they'll see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory, Matthew 24, 30. The tribes of the earth will mourn because they'll be in rebellion at the time, at the end of the tribulation, and as soon as they see him, they'll know the rebellion is about to be crushed. 
So only a few witnessed Jesus' ascension, but everyone will witness Jesus' descension. Acts 1b is next.